Dunfermline's hopes of survival were swamped in a Kilmarnock goal rush. Jerome Varai returned for Kilmarnock after a four-month absence and the Frenchman showed early on he was determined to give the Dunfermline defence a torrid afternoon. Varai was helped by his Killy teammates and after 26 minutes they opened the scoring through John Henry. It was Henry's second goal for Kilmarnock this season. Alan Mahood was the man with the cutback and Henry got in front of Greg Shields to shoot past Butler. Dunfermline though could have gone in level at the interval. Jim Laughlin caused problems for his own defence when he was short with this headed pass back. But when Scott Thompson's cross looked goal bound, Gus McPherson made the important goal line clearance. There was one more chance for the pass before the break, but Gordon Marshall was again at the top of his form. It was Andy Todd's header from Stuart Petrie's free kick, which forced the keeper to produce this marvellous save. The second half, though, was all about Kilmarnock, and in the 55th minute, they made it 2-0. Although it took a few chances for it to be converted, there was no doubting the quality of the move. Henry may have been denied by Butler, but Ali Mitchell somehow managed to squeeze the ball in at the near post. Farai set up Henry, but while the combination of Shields and the keeper blocked his efforts, Mitchell hammered it in off the luckless Mark Miller. Two minutes later, there was even more misery for Miller and Dunfermline, as Ian Durant made him pay for slack play out of defence with a fine solo effort. It was Durant's fourth goal of the season and three of them have been against the Pars at East End Park. To be fair to Miller though, he may have had a decent claim that Varai tripped him, but Durant wasn't hanging around to debate it. At the other end, Dunfermline had a rare opportunity, but Owen Coyle's effort summed up the Pars' frustrations. It made grim viewing for Dick Campbell, but worse was to follow. In 68 minutes, the move of the match produced the goal of the match. Kelly's possession play has been an asset all season, and this showed it in all its glory. A fine build-up featured a seven-man move involving eight passes, and it ended with Jerome Varai showing he was back with a bang. Ian Durant, ever the link man, played a neat one-two with Ali Mitchell, and Varai accepted the pass to finish in style. If you've lost count, that was number four, and number five was not long in arriving. Another free-flowing move stretched the Pars midfield and defence, and Alan Mahood set up John Henry for his second of the game. It was Henry's third of the season for Kilmarnock, but his ninth overall, having scored six for Falkirk during his loan spell. The Pars plugged away and once more it was Gordon Marshall's turn to show his class with yet another fine stop from Andy Todd. Dunfermline fans had seen enough, but Killy were not finished there. Well into stoppage time, Marshall began the move that was to lead to Killy's sixth. And once again, no Dunfermline player touched the ball before substitute Ali McCoist inevitably got in in the act. Not only with his goal, but with the way he formally received the congratulations of his teammates. It wrapped up a convincing win for the visitors and strengthened their claim for a European place. It's not easy to keep this place, but we have to carry on because St. Johnston behind is a very good team. And uh, I think we done, we're playing a very, very good football just now. And uh, I think we, we're going to play to Europe next year. You must have been pleased with the return of Jerome Varai. Yeah, he's done well, the boy. And I, was, I thought it may have been a bit early for him. He never got a game midweek. He's only played 45 minutes in the under-21s. And, under and um, I just had a gut feeling that he, he could maybe do something. It was, it was on schedule to give us an hour and uh, see what we can get out of it. And uh, he's done very well.